go. Hang on, this live. Hi, everybody. It's Wednesday. It's 12 o'clock, so it's time for the Busy Webinar. My name is Trigby. I'm the Director of Buzz Development here at BusyWeb. Thanks for joining us. With me, as always, is, uh, depending on the day, either my faithful sidekick or my colleague, Jenna. Let's say colleague. Colleague. Hi. Hi. It's on. it's a gorgeous fall day here in uh, Champlain, Minnesota. How are you today, Jenna? You know what? I'm doing good. Can't complain. <clears throat> cool. Cool. We were talking about Luke Cage before we yes. get started. And here's the question of the day. If you are a criminal mastermind, why would you own an establishment like a nightclub, which is by nature a cash-based business, then you would naturally have the IRS all over you anyway and have legality issues to make sure our kitchen staff is is okay. Wouldn't it just be easier to own like a, you know, like a dry cleaner or something like that? But then it wouldn't be as cool when you have a fight in there. Maybe. True, true. I mean, it. well, I don't know. You could hang a guy on the dry, clean, dry cleaning rack and watch him go around if you knock him out. But yeah. You know, equally as cool, Jenna, is we're going to be talking about marketing today and automating your mar your marketing. Is that it, segue. That was is great. It, how's that for a how, how, how's that for a segue? Uh, once again, my name is Trigby. I am the director of Buzz Development. If you would be interested in getting this presentation after the fact, I'd be more than happy to share it with you. You can reach me at Trigby at BusyWeb.com. You can also call me at 651-252-4052. And uh, normally I have Jenna's picture in here today, but I got a little behind, so I wasn't able to include it. But Jenna's here too. Say hi, Jenna. Hi. You can just imagine what I look like in your head. Right. You know I mean. e exactly. <laughs> it's uh, it's like uh, she's like a tiny Lisa Loeb. <laughs> I have no idea who that is. You know, oh I'm gonna my be honest. God. <laughs> she sang the 1994 hit "Stay." No, nothing. No. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> wow, do I feel old today? All right. Uh, if you have questions and you are listening to this live as we are doing it, Jenna is monitoring Twitter. Please use the hashtag #BusyWebinar. B i z z y w e b i n a r, and we'll be more than happy to stop and answer questions for you. If you're new to the Busy Webinar, well, welcome. We are a full-service digital marketing agency based in uh, the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. We have a team of about 16 people, We are, and uh, we do everything under the sun digitally. So it, we build websites, build brands, we build social media channels, we do content, we do search engine optimization to grow your audience, and even work on conversion strategies for, for you. Here are a couple examples of what we do. If you're interested, please by all means reach out to us and we'd love to, to have a chat with you. But today what we're gonna be talking about is how to be a marketer and how to make your life easier. So one of the tools that we really like here at BusyWeb is Constant Contact. They were gracious enough, uh, enough to uh, help us sponsor this event today. So, and obviously because it's me and Jenna, we wanna have as many pictures of dogs as possible in, the, in here. So of course. it's a great program. It starts at about $20 a month. You can use it to create and manage campaigns, uh, both social and email. I'm, I'm gonna give you a special offer as we're done that I'd encourage you to take a look at. So uh, Jenna, when you were in school, they taught you about the, the sales funnel, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it kind of looked like this, right? You put a lot of time into finding new prospects and then spending le less time converting and to them into customers, and then you spend the least amount of time into keeping them, right? Mm -hmm. That's a typical sales funnel. Trouble is it's wrong. Because of the nature of digital marketing now, this, this funnel is actually flipped. It's easier than ever to find new customers. It's just as hard to convert them, and it's more important than ever to keep your new customers because, simply put, uh, any of your customers can go to Google and uh, enter in one key phrase, and they can find a list of all your competitors. So keeping them is more crucial than ever. One of the ways in which you can do that is by measuring your marketing to make sure that you are being successful, but what we're going to be talking about today is using automation tools to complement your list activities. It helps you get closer to the revenue goals that you want or the donations, and it also helps you steer new customers towards becoming customer, new subscribers to becoming customers, excuse me, and then also generates action and information that you can measure, like clicks and downloads, uh, how many people came to the door, 
how many new uh, reservations you got, you got, or how many new calls. Your customers, on the other hand, get a lot of great information from you. You're always staying peace of mind because, uh, front of mind, excuse me, because you're getting coupons and discounts. You're always providing new and interesting information, and you're always there to help. So having some automation tools makes this process a lot easier and faster, and it, it, and it works completely behind the scenes for you. So we talked a little bit about flipping the funnel and how the funnel is changed by the marketing people who already know you. This, uh, the type of customer nurturing that we're going to be talking about is beneficial because those are the types of supporters who've already chosen to interact with your organization and hoping of getting something. So what, the, what I'm going to specify with today is actually talking about email marketing. And primarily it's because 91% of people check their email daily. People do their research before they call. People do their research before they, they make a large purchase, like I have to buy a new furnace. And uh, the way, one of the ways in which I did that was I signed up for an email uh, subscriber from the, the uh, company I chose to go with. So 82%, if you offer them the opportunity to join your email list, they're just, they're just simply going to do it. And then 72% of those people sign up uh, hoping to get a discount. I got a $200 discount on my uh, several thousand dollar furnace, but I felt good because I got $200 off. On the other side, on the converse, when you own the business, you always want to focus on return on investment, and email marketing is very, very cheap for you. Again, we talked about that a little earlier. It's only about $20 a month, but for the average return, if you do it well and you do it right, means you can get about a 4,000% return on your investment. And here's the punchline. Email marketing gives you a three times higher conversion rate than social media. So that mean, what does that mean in English? It means you can get a customer three times faster using email than you can on social media marketing. So I, I always have a hard time learning something new, especially when I'm with somebody who's so much smarter than I am, like I am today with Jenna. So uh, I want to make sure that I, I, I list what the jargon is that I'm going to be talking about. and. Uh, what exactly it, uh, it, it in fact means. So when I say autoresponder, what I mean by that is any kind of pre-designed automated email. Date-based triggers are something that go out on a specific day. Uh, contact is somebody that you already have on your list. A subscriber is somebody that you didn't have before. And then finally, a campaign is what exactly your email marketing or message is going to be. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. Do we have any questions yet? I haven't seen any come through just yet. Are we actually uh, running correctly? Yeah. It looks like we are. Oh, Nino. First oh, button's going. Nino, first time for everything. Okay, so here's what we're going to be covering today. Number one, what is an automation campaign? I'll talk about automation campaigns are and how they help your organization make a great first impression. Then second, how do you know if you, sh you should be using one? Third, how do you know if you're using it the right way? I'll show you some people who are doing it now and give you some next steps on how to uh, really let it rip. So as a small business owner, uh, you, you don't have a lot of time to do what you need to do. But in today's market, you do need to market yourself because, again, as I talked about, people can find your competitors very, very easily. You're here today because you want to save time and be successful and competitive in your business without having to sit on your computer all day when you've got other things that have to be done. So automating communications that you find yourself sending all the time or wish you had the time to send more regularly is a really powerful and easy way to, to communicate a consistent and unified message about your company or nonprofit to every subscriber you receive without consuming any of that precious, precious time or even wear a different hat. I don't like hats. How about you, Jenna? Yeah, not really. Yeah. They messed up my hair. Uh, right, exactly. So what are autoresponders and how do they work? Autoresponders work while you work. While you're taking care of your business, your autoresponders are going to be welcoming new subscribers into your community on behalf, on your behalf, and you can rest assured that they're going to receive timely information anytime they establish a relationship with your organization. So first step is when somebody signs up for your mailing list, they're automatically going to be sending, getting the promotional materials or messages that you want them to get. So this could be a coupon code, a discount code, uh, a video to watch, a downloadable asset like, a, like an ebook or tips and tricks or a survey or simply a thank you 
a welcome message. Before we leave, can I have a little bit of props that I got all the gears to move correctly? That, you know, that was pretty impressive. Thank I'm you. not going to lie. I'm not as smart as you are, so it takes me, it takes me quite a bit longer. So how does, a, how does an autoresponder work? It, uh, it can be sent to uh, mail the subscribers after you've added them to a list or the, after they've subscribed to your mailing list from your sign-up form on your web page or even text to join or signing up through a QR code or anything like that. So think about those welcome emails that sometimes you get after subscribing to a business's mailing list. Some of you offer a coupon immediately upon signing up. Some of you offer a free thing like a coffee or a gift or a few, few, day, few days after subscribing. So second is the buy date. Uh, autoresponders can be triggered, triggered to send a specific date like an anniversary or a birthday. An anniversary date can you know, obviously be a personal one, but it also can be the last time they purchased a product from you or when they started working together with you. So if you set it up correctly, the, uh, any system should be able to uh, search your contact database for contact with a birth with a contacts with a birthday and then send them a message. So kind of like how sometimes you get uh, a, 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 an anniversary reminder for your gym. I get that all the time. I also get, get them when I don't uh, go to the gym r regularly or my barber sometimes give me, gives me a free birthday coupon. So autoresponders save you a tremendous amount of time, but it also gives you freedom to think differently about the ways you communicate with your contacts and build relationships and even how you do more business to support your cause. There's a few different kinds of automation. So think of it like an umbrella with a few different things underneath it and a few different reasons why you would create an autoresponder. So, First, there's a message that triggers to send something to somebody first when they join your mailing list or if you add them to a list. So uh, best example I can give you of that is a welcome email. Uh, another type of autoresponder series could be created by if they've um, re-engaged with something, if they've added a contact, or if they've referred. Second, there's date-based date autoresponders. So what that is is the system checks on a regular basis for contacts whose the data that you put in there qualifies them to receive uh, some sort of free thing, like a birthday or an anniversary email. So a few weeks before somebody's birthday, the system would automatically send them uh, an, an happy birthday, and it would actually go out on their email uh, on their birthday. So let's actually figure out how this is going to work for you. So. Big question of the day is what's the difference between, uh, and this is probably a pretty nerdy question, I think, is what's the difference between date-based automation tools and list join automation tools? What do they have in common? I had to write that down. That, 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 was a, that was a long question for me. That's a tongue twister. I've already forgotten what we're comparing, but I'm right? sure it'll be on the screen. Well, first we're compar comparing date-based automation. It makes communicating certain messages on specific dates automatic and timely which means less maintenance from you. So it saves you from having to remember, oh my gosh, it's somebody's birthday, or oh my gosh, somebody's membership is due. So for, for instance, if you're a nonprofit that collects birthdays to send special messages to big donors, uh, the, the, the tools available to you can seek out this birthday or anniversary list. So the uh, other comparison is list join automation. And thank you, Jennifer, for listening. I appreciate that. Is a series of welcome emails, <coughs> which uh, gets created once and then schedules to send when triggered by new subscribers joining your list. So there's another way of referring to this is a drip campaign. So as they engage new people multiple times in a sequence after the initial interaction with your, with, with your company. So really what it's meant to do is drive a specific action f to get the new subscriber to do. Really it's meant to get them to pick up the phone and call you. So what they have in common is they're created in advance and they're intended to always be evergreen, which is a new term, so the contents don't become outdated. Uh, they should also be designed with only one major call to action or one thing really that you want the recipient to do after receiving the message. I'll explain what evergreen is in, in a little bit. So here's how it looks in action. So I'm searching for a gift for some, someone special. I have, I have Jenna on Secret Santa this year. <laughs> well, it would be easy. You just have to get anything with Batman on it, and then I'll be good. Oh, my God. 
if you have my, if I'm your secret, you're my secret Santa, you also have to get me anything with Batman on it. We're easy to please. Why don't we just go buy some Batman stuff for ourselves and call it good? Yeah, works for me. All right, cool. They do a, so, all right, so I'm going to do an online search for Batman stuff, and then I'm going to come across your business. So I'm going to look at email, I'm going to get an email, maybe look at a website, or maybe ask some of Jenna's friends on social media. So I found a store. Uh, I'm interested in some of the uh, stuff that they've uh, featured on the website, but I want some more information. Also, because we have a cash uh, cash limit, I, I need a I need a coupon. So they notice that uh, they're advertising uh, a coupon for joining my ma joining the mailing list. So I go ahead and subscribe. So the company set up a welcome email autoresponder, and as soon as that happens, they automatically send me that coupon. Now I feel validated because not only has the company reached back out to me, but I also get what I want and get my present for Jenna that much quicker. So the su subscriber, namely me, is left with a really great first impression. And I immediately redeem that coupon. So this gets to work for you even if you don't sell online because in the end, the same sort of cycle ends with your subscriber making a purchase from you or taking that next step with your business. And the way they do that is going back into your actual store. So how do we know if we should use one? Before we start, I'll ask uh, if any of you out there are using the hashtag busy webinar to ask us questions in real time. Does, do we have any questions yet, Jenna? Uh, nope, I don't see any. Cool, excellent. Well, Just yet. <laughs> let's talk about if using an autoresponder is right for your organization, and then how do you identify ways it can be advantageous to you? So do you send the same introductory information over and over? So if your customers support or need special information, like a form, like a prerequisite learning, or some informational content, uh, an autoresponder can send this each and every time to a new subscriber. Second, do you not send introductory information to new subscribers? So if you get a lot of contacts on the road, do you go and store them in a CRM, but don't transfer them over your email database? Well, that's another missed opportunity. Should every time somebody uh, subscribe to your email list feel validated and welcome every time they do? If they do, then absolutely you want to join them. I want to offer something. Do you want to create a lasting first impression immediately? This is a trick question because everybody should answer yes to this. Do you have specialized sub-audiences with varying interests? That's a fancy way of saying, do you do more than one thing for your audience? If you do, then absolutely you should be doing this. Do you want to send annual reminders? Maybe yes, maybe no. Certainly if you can celebrate a customer's birthday, that's a fantastic way of uh, answering yes to the question, is an autoresponder right for you? Look at that, I even added click marks. Oh, ooh. check, check. I forgot all about that. I should have been clicking as I talk. So these days, most people research before they buy or volunteer or even donate. People are more discerning about committing time or money to something, and they're expecting to receive specific information about where their money's going in a very timely manner. So these the autoresponder messages help them formulate a quick impression of your business with the initial email they receive from you. So you want to make sure that you're steering that impression to the positive by delivering what they need immediately. So again, if you have the opportunity, uh, anytime a new subscriber is going to get an email, statistically speaking, about 60% of the time, they're going to open that more than, more than not. And uh, even more alarming, 89% of consumers turn to a search engine to find information on products or services. So that automation campaign should help you capture those leads, but it also begs the question that being shown on uh, search engines in a positive way is, is definitely going to be positive. Okay, so let's talk about how to use this in the right way. Uh, we'll talk about some best practices you need to follow to deliver the results that you really want to get. So. The first thing I'd suggest you do is map out your autoresponder emails before you create them and think about the story in which you want to tell. An autoresponder is meant to educate and then mobilize your new subscribers to take the next step. So it's all about getting the results that you can measure. 
So keep it short, keep it straight to the point. You want them to go from point A to B. There's no extra fluff here. Make sure that the call to action buttons, the links, the videos, all of it are directing a subscriber to go directly to your online program or come into your store. If you want them to donate, sign up to volunteer, or even visit your shopping page, make that the most prominent message that you're offering. So now let's talk about what you need to set up behind the scenes before hitting, hitting that schedule button. So in order for an automation campaign to work, you have to have a really great organized list, period. If you don't have a good organized list, you should pause this and come back when you, do, when you have a really great organized list. Okay, welcome back. Since you can create multiple autoresponders, it's important to keep your records clear. So the easiest way to do that is by segmenting your list of contacts right off the bat. The, easiest, the, the best start to segmentation is uh, existing customers and then prospects. And then you're going to get into more and more depth into that. And you want to make sure that you use language the f that people can immediately relate to. So we use the term digital marketing agency, but that doesn't always get everybody's attention and they don't always know what, what exactly we are. So we want to make sure that the language is uh, open and accessible. So here's an example from, uh, from uh, uh, excuse me, I'm a little behind. So if you put these best practices in, into harnessing your organization, oops, I went too far. Whoa, too many clicks. Too many clicks. So you can see is, is you've got multiple people having multiple different interests. And so just create a, an important list. They're all going to come from that sign-up list. And then as we do that, we can then figure out what is the important message that each one of those groups of people want to end up hearing. Second, there's a lot of different things that you can offer. You've got plenty of things to, to, to offer. So the best way to offer to access what you offer is make a list of all the digital assets that you have. So you could have a video, you could have a story and installments, you could have a new recipe if you're uh, have somewhat food oriented, um, show your company culture, you could even share a collage of photos of your products and services or even your culture, or even a, a link to an informative blog post. The important thing, again, is to make sure that this is going to be always consistent. The goal of what we're doing here is to have it be good as soon as we're done doing it and walk away. So make sure that none of the information that you're providing is particularly dated. You can also provide a webinar. You can provide a, a cheat sheet or a how-to guide or even uh, my favorite, which is a coupon. So let's talk about what evergreen really, really means. It's timeless content. It's informational copy that doesn't have an expiration date, and it will require no updating over time. It will always be relevant. It will always deliver details that somebody new to your organization is going to need in order to establish a good relationship with the company. So you don't want to include any specific seasonal things. You don't want to include something that you might stop carrying, and you don't want to include something that uh, somebody new would have to focus on. You want the recipient to respond to your message, so don't confuse them with a million little things to interact with because they won't. Just give them the one thing that they want, give them and ask them what to do next. You also want to keep it straight and to the point. You want to have them clearly understand what they're going to get from you and what, you, what you're asking them to do. Remember, this is your first impression, so you want to make it rewarding, uplifting, easy, and quick. It's going to be your best possible content because it's going to be that first impression stuff. So once you've mapped out a couple short series of emails, I think in our autoresponder program we have what, four, Jenna? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So four to six is about what you want. You want to consider the timing next. So you want to deliver the message in a timely way so that each email is a series of, of gentle nudges towards picking up the phone and calling you. So think about how many times do you send regular emails? Do you send them weekly? Do you send them daily? Do you send them monthly? Your autoresponder sequence should uh, have uh, get somebody a new e email, the welcome email, within about 24 hours of having subscribed. So if they subscribe the day before, you, you send their weekly email, 
they're already going to have some context. You send once a month. Then with your autoresponder series, spread their welcome emails out. Do one or two a week to stay top of mind, but not so many that they're going to be uh, bothered by you. Do you send biweekly? If you do that, then uh, schedule your autoresponder a day or two apart to introduce uh, your new subscriber to your, you know, air quote club. So they get used to the information that they're getting. So when the big club comes, which is your newsletter, or one of your regular ma mailings come, they're going to be feeling part of the community or more comfortable with your brand. Or if you just do it occasionally, that's fine. Just make sure that your autoresponder is in a consistent way. Best way to do that is about once a week. So let's look at uh, how this would actually uh, works in real time. So I've got a couple of different examples here. The B2B example, it's uh, it's got their logo involved. It's a very short pointed email and it, it's got a picture of who you're dealing with. So you immediately put a face to the name. It stops being a, uh, an, a uh, <clears throat> uh, company versus you. Now you're really talking to, to uh, just just one person. So nonprofits, again, that, that, that's kind of short as well. It's, it, but it's clear, it's fun, it's interesting, and it clearly, all three of these clearly let you know what you're gonna be getting. Uh, a welcome email will ensure that anybody who signs up for your list or is looking for more information about what you do, they're immediately getting the kickoff, the, 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 the information they need to, to really feel comfortable about doing business with you. And that's the whole purpose and the value of welcome email. So uh, first, uh, the, uh, um, what we recommend a lot here at BusyWeb is the um, value of a editorial calendar. And I provided one here. So you can see that this is what a hypothetical month might be. The second week of the month is when the regular newsletter goes out. And then the last week of the month is when it goes out. So within that, we have an autoresponder series set up so that Every day that week, they're going to get a new introductory value to joining the joining the organization. By doing that, you can see that in uh, just by doing one promotion, the bi-monthly newsletter, and then the autoresponder, we're actually touching people seven to ten times already. And if they decide that they they're going to unsubscribe, well, okay, fine. Then maybe they weren't going to be a great customer anyway. But at least we're consistently providing really good value as we're moving forward. So here's a great example that I, I like. It's uh, from a company called Liberty Jane Clothing. They make uh, um, clothing patterns for American Girl dolls. So, uh -huh. right? It, yeah, mm -hmm. it's perfect. So, in the welcome email, they share two free patterns to uh, f to try and so right after subscribing. So. After the welcome email, they get an email about how to connect with the, the social networks, including some self-help videos. Uh, the third email uh, talks about the other branches of the company, uh, including a reseller program and charity in Zambia that they do. And then their fourth email is uh, about their rewards program for frequent purchasers. So again, buy more, you get, get good things. The last is a discount. So it's a buy two, get one free. And then uh, they've also send you a nice email uh, at, after the fact, um, checking out when uh, <clears throat> and uh, checking out uh, some, some more information on the, on the help. That's basically the last gap. At that point, you're hoping that people have already done some stuff with you. So here's another example from uh, a B2B company. It's called Building Aspirations. So he does something a little different. He spreads out, out his at digital assets quite a bit. So when somebody initially just subscribes, he tells them what he's going to be sending out and then what they can expect to learn from the digital videos that he's sending. So for him, it works really well because he stretches his assets out over a long period of time. So let's look at a portion of what that looks like, specifically this portion right here. So he starts with a welcome email. I showed it to you before. Then he sends some content out. He's clearly saying that it's going to be video, it's, and it, there's only one or two, so you're not confused as to which one you want want to to watch. And then the next one comes a few days apart. So again, it's a couple of videos, but it's slow and steady, and it clearly demonstrates that he is a thought leader in in what he does. 
So let's look at one last one. Let's look at a uh, a, a nonprofit. This is a this is a hypothetical uh, company called the Leafline Project, and again, they spread out their uh, their 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 stuff over a few weeks. So let's look at what exactly that looks like. So the welcome email, the company thanks the subscribers. It's nice, it's branded, it's clear, it's even got a video in it. The next email provides a completely different video of what the mission of the organization is. Next, they provide uh, more information about their operations and how to volunteer with the organization. Next, they are uh, providing an email on how to connect via Facebook. And then uh, finally, they're asking for a donation. So again, before they're really asking for money, you're getting a lot of pieces of content and you're learning and evaluating as you go. So there's no really wrong way to set up an automated series other than not doing it at all, because doing it gives you the opportunity to connect, connect with new customers and have new customers bubble up to the surface before you do anything. So here's some do's and don'ts. So uh, do make sure that they uh, you remind them that they did subscribe and show them how to clearly unsubscribe. Don't uh, not do that. Uh, second, make sure that you're letting them know how many emails they should expect from you. The worst thing in the world you can do is just start emailing people pell-mell because they're going to be wondering what you're doing for a living and why you're bothering them. You do want to make sure that you're sending an email immediately after joining. It's a fantastic thing to do. Uh, but the, the converse of that is that if your content is dated, then that's just going to cause you problems. Next, you want to make sure that you share any sort of thank you that you can, either, either an initial thank, email or after doing business with you. Uh, and in doing so, make sure you don't forget to include your colors, your logo, your brand, so they know that it's coming from you and they feel validated for deciding to do business with you. So how do we do this? How do we use an autoresponder? Well, and should we do this? Well, the first thing I'd suggest you do is determine whether or not how, how it could be used for you. Second, what are your call to action goals? What do you want your people to learn? What do you want them to do? And can you present that over a storyline of four to six emails? Next, create segmented lists. Organize your new lists into distinct categories so that you can target effectively. Next, use evergreen content. Make sure it's not dated. Make sure it's, it's timeless. And then finally, uh, think about the timing. How much are you going to send and how quickly are you going to send it? If you have a customer base that doesn't like to be bothered on a daily basis, then don't do that. So uh, once again, you can be a marketer. We love constant contact here. It's one of the, a really great tool and a really effective tool for small business marketing, which is why we included it here. In fact, uh, we've got a couple of great resources for you. If you would like to do more of these online seminars, you can join us at busyweb.com. But as a special uh, offer for those of you who are subscribing uh, today or even listing online, you go to constantcontact.com slash event dash Meyer. For all of our busy webinar participants, you get constant contact for five bucks for the first three months. It's a lovely deal, five bucks out the door. So even if your list is 100,000 people, you can get this $5 deal. Quick plug for us before we go. If you are interested in getting our emails, we'd love to have you. Easiest way to do that is to text busy to 22828. And uh, that's it. Jenna, before we go, do we have any questions through uh, the hashtag BusyWebinar? I don't see any. Excellent. Well, in that case, uh, do you want to do the honors? All right. Bye.